Welcome to Top Tables, where I'll showcase various UV tournament experiences within Toronto and even beyond the city as I prepare for big events such as regionals, YCS, and the NAWCQ. Hey guys, so we're already at episode 2 of this vlog, so a huge thanks to all of you for the positive reception on the first one. Uh, you can certainly go check that out if you haven't already done so. Anyways, Maze of Millennia, it is finally out, and this set has been pretty crazy in terms of the pre-order prices for bonfires, uh, but we do have a chance to win some packs today at the tournament hosted by Game Shack, which is a store that uh, we're going to be covering in today's vlog. So this is a store that's near York Day Mall, it's an incredible environment. Uh, Mike and Bennett who work there are absolutely amazing, they've even set up a separate table for me uh, to be able to record like my matches for this vlog which is awesome uh, now so I, I do find this locals uh, is mostly rogue deck so admittedly in the past few times that I've been there I've done quite quite well and so hopefully let's uh let's hope that streak continues and the great thing with weekend tournaments is that there's just so much time to do other chores before the event starts you know clean the house get groceries work out uh, and actually speaking of that I heard that the uh, more reps you do uh, the better you can play through a hand trap so let's just stay healthy friends <laughs> Anyways, uh, in terms of my actual deck list, not much has changed since I brought it on my channel a couple of weeks ago when I finished top 8 at the remote regional uh, for Branded Despia. I really just took out an allure, put in Branded High Spirits because I really do love that card. I also added in a couple bells uh, in the side uh, just because of like Fire King and whatnot. So anyways, that being said, let's just get ready for locals. So it's gonna be four rounds of Swiss today and for these vlogs I think I'm only gonna cover just a couple of matches in full because otherwise the vlog would get very long and it would be just a lot of work for me to go through. So anyways let's just start with round one against Daniel who was piloting Runic Live Twin Sprite. Alright so we do win the die roll fortunately so we do get to go first we're gonna uh, start off with the fusion deployment reveal granule summon out the Cartesia we have access to a uh, straightforward way to gimmick lock at least a uh, brand new opening to get the uh, luber because you basically need Cartesia summon and brand new fusion uh, it's kind of the easiest way uh, brand new fusion fortunately we are not ashed here so we're gonna dump the Albaz and the Lubellion to summon the Albion dragon and we're also gonna chain Cartesia here uh, to make the granule and then make the sanctifier which I actually kind of forgot to do uh, but we do fix that right away uh, so I kind of like to do it this way for game ones just because I don't know what my opponent's playing I want to make sure maybe I say save the Brandon rep for a guardian chimera play instead of trying to make it on the sanctifier on the opponent's turn where it might not work out my um, opponent uh, now that I do know he's playing runic which I've played him before and then I was aware that he was playing droplets the last time I faced this deck uh, when he was uh, piloting it so I, I've decided to actually just play the Brandon red here to kind of force out that droplet otherwise with the lost interaction he's not going to respond otherwise and he would have needed a monster to be able to make sure uh, and so uh, you know I normally like to save that red again uh, for the guardian chimera play but this time I decided you know what let's kind of make an exception uh, so we also have uh, we do successfully game a lock we do bring out the aluber so we can uh, add another brand of fusion for our turn uh, and we also have a mirror jade of course so our opponents uh, just gonna activate the fountain set three passes where you know again branded red set can be kind of good uh, especially when you can't summon out like a Hugin because he's locked uh, so now we have a pretty big uh, number of monsters we're going to start with uh, another Brand of Fusion. This is where it gets a little risky sometimes, is that you don't want to clog up your zones unless you know for sure you can uh, def kill, kill your opponent that same turn, because then you're not going to be able to gimmick lock when you run out of zones, right? So th that is one of the downsides of Brand of Fusioning again in turn 3, when you have uh, gimmick lock just uh, free to be aware. Uh, we do have Dragoon, we're going to pop and burn for a thousand, and we're going to start attacking and hoping that uh, things go through. So he's gonna activate, uh, I think, uh, Freezing Curses. Uh, he's gonna try. So I don't even bother. Say, I do have Branded Opening Grave. I don't even bother with it because, again, I wanted to kind of clear zones and I've already kind of attacked, anyways. And I have enough uh, to deal game, anyways. So uh, he's gonna use a tip here. And I just let him summon. It doesn't really matter. Jerry does destroy, but it does target, I believe. So that's why it's a pretty good position. And again, I just uh, let the Lubellian die. I'm fine with clearing zones. And this one I will negate so that I have enough game. And we do go for game two. All right, so game two, we're obviously going second. My hand uh, could have been better, but still also good. It was more like I kind of sequenced things wrong. I had something like Ash. A uh, droll, I uh, had an Albaz and Thrust, which I needed to get it live to get access to Brand Fusion. I also had a Cosmic, and you're gonna see me kind of, uh, kind of overshoot it in terms of thinking process. I definitely could have done it better. Anyways, he's gonna do his like you know Runic Live Twin uh, combo stuff, and he's gonna add the Fountain off Hugin, and we are gonna droll here. Which is pretty good, honestly, against like Live Twin uh, slash Runic decks in general. Gigantic Sprite Summon, of course, we're gonna Ash that as well. That's another pretty good hit there. Uh, opponent's gonna go into the uh, pink link 2 
uh, bring back and then go into the blue one. And then blue will bring back the other pink link too, which normally he'd be able to draw, but obviously under draw cannot do that. Uh, gonna go into another pink. Uh, Actually found set one pass. So I bluff a battle phase, hoping that he would activate the link to effect so that I can get the thrust live. Uh, and then, so that was kind of my one first mistake. The other is I did eventually uh, snipe the set because I thought it'd be impermanent. I wanted the Abla's effect to really go through. The problem was it was actually a runic spell. So he gets the, you know, draw two, which really sucks because I should have just went for, even if it was impermanent, I should have just summoned the Abla's uh, because if it negates it, I just tried to go uh, battle, assuming, you know, again, if I didn't buff that battle phase, then he would probably activate the link to effect and I get the thrust live and I could just uh, kind of go from there but unfortunately I did uh, miss sequence that so we're gonna go into game three so we're gonna go into game three obviously I'm gonna go first we're actually just gonna start off with the uh, Aluber summon just to add brand new fusion I did have also opening um, so I could have actually done that first to maybe bait an imperm on Quem as well uh, so now we're gonna bring out the Quem now and then we'll just dump the uh, Kartesia uh, next we'll go brand fusion it does get ash but we do have a uh, nadir servant uh which is uh this is where maximus can be uh, quite deadly um in situations like these especially so we're gonna dump uh unfortunately we are uh gonna have to dump uh the lulu though we cannot dump the uh garura unfortunately because we actually i believe hard drew the maximus i should have pitch the Maximus off opening. That's, I remember, was the misplay because Guru is only 1500 attack. You can only add basically uh, Quem or Maximus, uh, which is like, you know, 1500. And so uh, if I had just pitched Maximus off the branded opening, you can actually add from Grave as well. So we're going to dump a couple cards from the extra deck. Uh, so we are uh, in a pretty good shape. We're obviously locked out of the extra deck uh, after playing Nadir Servant. So that's why we're kind of uh, stuck in this kind of weird position here. But uh, he's going to go into Hugin. Uh, I believe this is before the main phase because obviously with Cartesia, we can uh, start triggering that. He's going to go jet add. Uh, we are going to just trigger the uh, Cartesia here, uh, go into Granule, and then he's going to add off of the jet first, and he's going to get the starter. We're going to go Granule effect to dump. Uh, I believe we were also triggering Quem to bring the Albas, and he does have that droplets I was talking to you about earlier. So he's going to negate, I believe, Quem and the Granule. So now he's going to summon out the blue, add the carrot. And on res, I do have the Rimbrum that I sent off of Maximus the turn before. We're going to go Albas, uh, bring that back uh, to go into Mirror Jade. And then we're going to go Mirror Jade effect just so he doesn't have any bodies. We're going to uh, banish the blue. Next, he's going to activate the Fountain. And he's going to activate uh, Freezing Curse. Uh, we're going to trigger Brandon Red here. Uh, bring back the Aluber. And we're going to go into Guardian Chimera. He was actually using the uh, Runic Guard to uh, special. Uh, he's going to summon out the Jerry. So we're gonna use Camaro effect, draw two, pop two. Uh, he actually can, uh, it turns out Gary can't be uh, destroyed by card effects. I did check the rulings on this though. Uh, even though that card in itself cannot be destroyed, it can still attempt to destroy the other cards. So the fountain would still end up being destroyed uh, with Camaro. So that's uh, useful to know. Uh, so now we're just gonna go into end phase. We're gonna get a lot of uh, advantage off Albion and also Cartesia. And so we're just gonna switch everything in attack mode. Uh, go Brand Fusion again, uh, Lubellion. Uh, pitch. Uh, we're gonna make Dragoon, which I tend to do a lot actually. It's uh, kind of my boss monsters for uh, quite some time. I'm gonna also use opening to protect and we do take that match. Come on, something good. Please, give me the juice. Ah. Uh, oh. oh, it's another card. <laughs> So for round two, we're going against Dylan, who was piloting Phantom Knight. Super cool dude, unfortunately did not open well both games, so I did take the win there as well, but we did play for fun after and he was just comboing off, and I think this is a good rogue choice with the powerful horse cards available. Yeah, what's your favorite card in the Transaction roll yeah. Uh, my favorite card? Uh, probably Bonfire, yeah. I believe it's going to be Transaction Rollback. What, is there, what other people say already? It's Bonfire. I need the card, man. Tier Fire 1 King? all day, Fire King all day. You know what it is. Man, it's Chimera. Buzz King, bro. Number one! <laughs> <laughs> Number one! Buzz King. <laughs> Transaction rollback. Oh, really? That's that's push. Push. Uh, for me, it's tied. But honestly, I think Transaction rollback's going to be a lot more fun. Probably number one, Faction Buzz King. Wow, that's actually the second time I heard that today. <laughs> hey, fake numbers and the real numbers are just cool. <laughs> So round three, we're facing against Matt, who I've featured on my channel before and really loves his rogue decks. And this time he's piloting Runic Generator, so let's just get started. 
All right, so we did win the Dire Wolf, fortunately. So we're going to go first. Uh, we unfortunately do not have access to Brand of Fusion in our opening hand. So we do have an Adir Servant, though, which can be pretty decent. Unfortunately, we're with the Droll as well. So Garura, we will not be able to draw. But we do still have Maximus Effect live. And as long as the opponent doesn't have an extra deck that kind of pluses off, uh, as, at least as much as we do, we're still in pretty good shape. We do have uh, two Albas in hand. So I'm going to dump the uh, Lulu and the Albion. And we're going to set the Brand in Red off Albion and also summon the Kurtigia off of Lulu. So we can still Gimmick Lucky on the opponent's turn. But it does allow uh, them to at least proceed into main phase which is not the best but you know what it's still workable uh matt's gonna start off his turn with pot of prosperity banishing six and he's gonna excavate oh actually he's gonna chain freezing curses here so he's gonna target critique and negate i was really tempted to super poly my own board because so at this point i did uh chain critique already and he's trying to negate it so if i did super poly my own board the problem is i go into granular and i'm immediately am forced to resolve the uh, critique fusion which i because i had nabas in hand i would have had to summon a mirror jade and i would not be able to dunk dump off of granular so i decided to just uh I'll let it get negated uh for now uh we do still have uh, again uh we do have super poly set so it can work he's gonna activate the generator spell we're gonna negate the diviner and then on res we're actually gonna super poly uh the diviner because it is a light monster so we're gonna actually be able to still go into granule here and then of course this can dump the uh something like gimmick puppet next we're gonna go uh, immediately brand in red uh go into sanctifier and then of course use its effect uh to lock the opponent and he's just gonna scoop here and we're gonna go into game two Okay, so game two, obviously I'm going to be going second now, and so we're going to get to see what this deck does. He does open Prosperity again, so he's going to banish six uh, to excavate. And looks like he has mostly combo pieces on one hand, which I was like, okay, at least he didn't draw some kind of Floodgate, although it could mean that he just hard opened the Floodgate instead. He's going to start with the Diviner again, uh, sending the uh, Trias. I believe that like provides some form of, you know, pop and like a uh, draw, depending on how many like fairies you tribute, I believe. And then he's going to have the Vala, and that's going to summon out from uh, the Horror, which uh, is pretty bonkers as well. So next he's going to summon out that Trias, uh, the Diviner effect triggers as well. Uh, and it summons the Consecrated Light, which is crazy. I guess it's a pretty good side option. <laughs> Basically, uh, we cannot special summon uh, Dark Monsters. And also, I believe it cannot be uh, destroyed by battle with Dark Monsters as well. So, uh, against Branded, you know, like, we do have a lot of Light Monsters, sure. But, like, we do also need to rely on our Darks as well. So, this is going to be really uh, difficult. And the Xyz uh, Generator can also tag out uh, for, like, the other bigger Xyz that, like, just sucks up cards, basically. Uh, we were kind of forced with like uh, only summoning light monsters, obviously, uh, because we can't summon dark. Uh, we have Cartesia effect that we're trying to trigger here. So I, do, I did think about going to Sanctifier, but I mean, I figured, you know what, it's probably just going to get eaten up by that uh, Generator Xyz. I go into Granule to at least dump something. And we're going to summon, uh, dump the Albion, rather. Uh, and then I decide to just stop uh, Brand Fusion, but then I'm hit by a summon limit, which is crazy. So I try to attack uh, into the Consecrated Light. He's going to tag out for the, the Snake Guy, and then, of course, it's going to start uh, sucking things up. Uh, so he does get the Kurtija and the Granule as well. We're just going to set a card. Uh, and then we're just going to scoop because there's no way I'm playing through this. Alright, so on to game 3. We of course get to go first. But unfortunately, we have to start with a Kit Summon. Which is not ideal because we do have to uh, neg one on uh, the card that we have to put back. But you know what? This was the only access to Brand Fusion. Uh, sometimes you just don't have a choice. My uh, hand otherwise uh, wasn't going to be amazing. We are also hit with a Droll. Uh, but as long as Brand Fusion can resolve. Uh, I also put back Tragedy. Fortunately, Brand Fusion resolves. So you know what? I like. I can't really complain. It would have been definitely really uh, bad <laughs> if that got stopped as well. We're going to send the Lubellion and Alba. Someone have the uh, Sang uh, Albion. Uh, we're going to go into Lubellion, of course, summon the Mirror Jade. We're also going to summon the Lubellion, except we are hit with the Nibiru. Uh, so at this point, I'm uh, kind of forced to trigger Mirror Jade before it dies. Uh, just a last hurrah. I'm also going to trigger the Mirror Jade so that uh, Nibiru dies in the end phase, which can actually be relevant. We do have Thrust, though, so we can uh, set the Fusion uh, Duplication to still uh, try to uh, play through uh, on the next turn. So we're going to just trigger some effects in the end phase. Brandon in red, uh, the uh, Titanic Cloud will summon the Quem. Quem is actually going to dump... Um, the Mercurial, just in case, you know what, I don't have access to law, so just in case it comes up off Sanctifier somewhere in the future, can serve as like a monster negate, because I do have fusion duplication, I can get the uh, Kurtigia through that way. He's gonna, yet again, have Prosperity. Uh, fun fact, you can actually trigger Quem when Prosperity uh, resolves, because that means uh, cards also left the extra deck, but we have fusion duplication anyway, so we're gonna summon uh, from the extra deck uh, regardless. So we are gonna summon out the uh, Sanctifier Dragon here, and of course, he's gonna uh, excavate for Prosperity first. And then we're, of course, uh, going to resolve the uh, Quem, which brings back the uh, Kurtija. Uh, he's going to go with the uh, Freezing Curses, or Flashing Fire, rather. And he's going to summon. Uh, we're going to go into Granule, and that, of course, uh, dumps the gimmick. 
And Matt does miss sequence things a little uh, here because he's trying to use the World Legacy uh, monstrosity, except of course I can just chain uh, the Sanctifier, summon out the Mirror Jade, and also the Game of Cuphead, just locking him out of that. And he does uh, scoop, so we do win that one as well, and we are now 3-0. Okay, and for the final round, unfortunately, I didn't have the capacity to record, but I did take that one as well and finish first place, which is awesome. Now, the bad news is that my pulls were absolute doo-doo, but let's just see what others pulled. Rollback. Oh, there's a roll, roll back. There's a rollback. Oh, yeah. CR? Spell? CR? Fire? Oh, right, That's crazy! Holy <laughs> shit! Nice! What? Whoa! for three bonfires. Jesus oh. Christ. Thank you, thank you guys, thank you, thank you. What? QCR? Um, yo? Oh my oh. god, what the frick is this? <laughs> Alright guys, so that was it for another episode of the vlog. Hope you enjoyed that. Again, a huge thanks to Game Shack for hosting a great tournament. The next vlog should cover the 3v3 maze case tourney event at 401 Games downtown, so definitely stay tuned for that one. Also, I want to congratulate Jason again for uh, pulling absolutely insane. We actually also did a virtual world deck profile because he finished third, so you can go check that out as well. Also, in my last vlog, I saw some comments about people considering, you know, going to their first locals. And if you're in that situation, I really do highly encourage you to check it out. I remember for my very first locals, you know, I was quite nervous because I didn't know anyone there. But at the same time, you know, you can make some great friends real quick. And in terms of getting better at Yu-Gi-Oh! competitive wise, you know, it's going to take some time. You're probably not going to do very well for the first couple of locals at least. Uh, but, you know, you will eventually get there if you put in the time and it's going to be great. Uh, so if even one of you watching uh, decides to go to locals uh, because of this, then I've already done my job and I'm really happy with that. So anyways, again, a huge thanks to all of you for watching. A big thanks to my patrons, uh, as always, for the continued support, and well, take care, guys.